What's up, guys? John here, Titan Talk Tuesday. We're in full effect. Another great Tuesday here in Titan Medical Center headquarters. It's been a great day. It's been a good week. Uh, last month was awesome. Great month for us here at Titan Medical Center. A lot of big things happening. Uh, a lot of new people coming on the Titan Medical team. Uh, so at that point, like, let's let's just get started. Um, so June, we're officially in June. Summer is here. Definitely my favorite months. Uh, I love summer and living in Florida, it's still hot and it gets real humid and stuff like that. But you know what? I wouldn't trade it for the world. I would not trade it for cold weather eight months or seven months out of the year like I used to live up north. It's just not for me no more, especially that. I just, I like the heat. So at that point, down here in summer, people are wanting to, you know, go out to the beach, go out to the pool, um, get a tan, you know, and at that point, what better way to be healthy, look your best, feel your best, and go out there with your best confidence. But June is another month, and it's Men's Health Month. So it's real important. I mean, we always talk about, you know, a lot of, a lot of times, breast cancer, cervical cancer. Um, but men, we really want to dive in deep with men. And you hear, I think, a little bit more from the females because they're more enough to, to talk about what's going on with them and their problems. They're more open a lot of the time. And us guys, we kind of keep it up, you know, inside. And we don't talk about it. We don't share our feelings. We're not open. We don't want to be, you know, um, thought of as weak or hurt or anything like that. You're taught, especially if you're an alpha masculine male, that, hey, listen, you don't show weakness because people will pounce on you if you do. And that's just the way it is. That's just the thought of the mind of the jungle, lion, tiger uh, mentality. So at that point, we don't really talk about the things that might be affecting us. We just blow it off. You know what? I just, you know, I, I, I'm a man. I, I, don't, I don't have no pain. And listen, I think we've all been there to a certain extent. Uh, it's like the Superman syndrome. Um, when you're young, especially, you know, you're, you're, you're immortal to a certain extent in your mind. And you do things that without thinking a little bit more when you get older and more mature you don't do those things or you think about it before you do it so i mean when we talk about men's health month there's a lot of different things that we can talk about and the proper thing is is really getting monitored getting tested and i'm not even talking about just for hormones let's talk about in general health so when we talk about men's health we should talk about a couple different things cardiovascular so we want to talk about cholesterol levels too Good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. How's the diet? When's the last time you got that blood tested? And that's a pretty common test if you go into your general practitioner. Another thing is we want to test out your liver and your kidneys. Make sure those vital organs are working correctly. Um, there are cardiac tests, like stress tests. You can test for the heart. Make sure things are good there, too, as well. Echocardiograms, uh, that's more of an intense test, but that's a great one to tell uh, what's going on with the heart. You can also look at different other things that will be affecting your health down the road. And this is as far as diabetes. So let's talk about diabetes. Sugar levels. Sugar levels are all time high in America and all time high with our generation. Um, and you see the older generation, like our parents, the baby boomers, they're really getting affected by this. And if you notice, you see all these commercials for A1C medications. And you gotta ask yourself, what is A1C? That's just some other medication. I have no idea. There's a ton of medications out there. So A1C, so hemoglobin A1C. What that is, is that is an average of your sugar levels over three month time, right? So that will tell you specifically, are you pre-diabetic, are you diabetic, or are you okay? You know, and you want to know what this is. Because usually when you get a glucose reading, right, that's if you fasted or haven't fasted, and that could be affected by what you've ate that day. So when you get the hemoglobin A1C, that is an average, and it doesn't matter if you fasted or not. You're going to get a true tell of what's going on. Now, I bring this up because sugar levels being high, what happens is, is the reason sugar levels being high is bad for you. It's like a silent killer, right? Um, is because they start killing off cells. Cells start dying off when sugar levels start getting high. The high sugar levels in the blood, right? And at that point, that could cause a lot of different things and negative health problems. That's why you see a lot, some of these diabetics, not all of them, but some when they start getting really bad, lose limbs, eyesight. I've even seen people lose eyeballs because of this, right? So you don't want that. Lose limbs, all type of neuropathy. Uh, it's just not fun, and it's not it's not something to take lightly, and it's not something you see instantly. So it's not like, oh, I can't eat a cupcake, and I go eat a cupcake. See, my limbs aren't falling off. I'm fine. It's not that. It's it's later on, and it's it's just a buildup over time. And at that point, if you do not control it, you're going to be in a whirlwind of trouble. 
And I know this because my dad's diabetic and he didn't know he was diabetic until we opened our clinic. Nobody tested his hemoglobin A1C. That is crazy. So, I mean, my dad was in his 50s at that point. Um, you know, and when you check it now, you know, and thank God it's gotten lower. There's a lot of good medications out there that lower hemoglobin A1C. There's oral and there's injectable uh, versions of different medications out there. Um, the most commonly used one to first start um, in that path is usually metformin, and that's used for pre-diabetics usually, um, people that have history of diabetes, people that are obese. So I bring this up in general health. We talk about men's general health. Obesity. Obesity is on the rise. It's not on the fall. We're not defeating obesity. Why? Because food habits haven't changed, food sources, and people really aren't taking it serious. Plus, we have a little, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing because I embrace everybody. But I think that the more public embracing of it's okay to be unhealthy and just to be you is not the right message to send. I do think that it's all right to be you. And if you're overweight, that's okay. And if you want to take a positive stance on health, that's great. And if you don't, that's fine too because it's your body. But don't say it's okay because at that point it could affect somebody in a negative light and not the way they look that day, but the way that they feel and in the future, their health. So at that point, why not put a positive direction or spin on it? And I always say that be better. You know, I tell my son this. I say, I want you to be better than me, right? Because listen, I'm good in a lot of different ways, but there's ways to perfect things that I've done wrong and things that basically um, that he can do to really help him be a better man, be healthier, do the right thing, right? So at that point, you know, think about how you can better yourself. So if you're obese, right, is it okay for you to teach your kids that same thing too? Or are you trying to teach them a better way? Are you trying to have them better than you? And that's really the message you should put out to your family uh, or your children, whoever it is. You should have them want to be better than you. Don't be a crab, as I'm per se, and try to drag them down with you. Always boost them up. Never put them down. Um, that's a big one for me. I, I, you know, I'm going through this with my son right now. You know, he's nine. You know, I, I want him to be as active as possible. We've got him in a lot of sports. Uh, but at that point, you know, some of his food choices, you know, they can be better. He wants sugar. And that's okay because kids usually do. But make sure you educate them what's in sugar, why it does what it does. Because if you just say it's bad for you, oh, that's my, my dad just told me it's bad for me. He doesn't want me to eat it. At that point, listen, tell them and educate them. Make them read labels. Educate them on the labels. And at that point, they can make an educated decision. Show them real live documentary type style things of what happens with these foods and people's general health. Um, Super Size Me was a big one for my son, right? He used to eat McDonald's when he was a little kid, like four or five. Loved chicken McNuggets, loved french fries. Showed him Super Size Me when he was six so he can understand it a little bit, no more. I mean, he will never ask for McDonald's. So at that point, I've even gotten to the point where instead of chicken tenders, right, it's now grilled chicken breasts or grilled chicken nuggets or whatever, stuff like that. So I'm getting him on a healthier kick and making sure he's there. But set the example. That's the big thing I want to, that's the big, big thing. All right, DNA fit test. All right, let's go into some of these things real quick. Let me get some of this men's health covered real quick. Team tight. What up, Drew? Oh, yeah, Superman Syndrome, my man Punisher, but you live it, baby. That's what it's all about, what helps bring energy. All right, so men's health. So a lot of you guys out there, you guys could be having symptoms. And when I talk about symptoms, I'm not talking about just ED. I'm talking about low energy, being lethargic, bad recovery time, concentration, foggy-minded. I used to call it the walking dead syndrome. I've been there. I know what it feels like. So at that point, I've been in your shoes. I can definitely tell you how you feel because if you've done it or been through it, then you can really relate to somebody that, that's going through it too. So at that point, listen, guys, it could be a hormone problem if it is an energy thing. If you have your hormones optimized and it's still an energy problem, then look at your B vitamins, look at vitamin D levels. Um, we have ECA Stack Plus. That will definitely give you energy, that nice boost. It will help you trim up and lose some of the weight or shred up in some of those pounds that you want to get off. Um, it's really, really good and very effective, and it will outweigh and outbalance um, any energy drink that's out there, um, any other kind of stimulant you're thinking about taking over the counter, this is definitely a better substitute and option for you. It's more healthier for sure. You know it's coming from a U.S. licensed pharmacy. It's doctor prescribed and monitored. So at that point, you will have somebody with medical support being able to help you. Um, at that point, you will get the best results. I promise you. So that's a good one. Tighten up and tighten complete. Those are the injectables that are natural for energy boosting. Um, I talked about the B complex, the B vitamins that are in there. And I also want to talk about the branched chain amino acids, the three leucine, isoleucine, valine, that create a great effect 
for weight loss, keeping lean muscle mass on. Um, you know, your amino acids are essential for the body, and these are essential amino acids. That means you need to get them from an outside source, and your body does not produce them. So that's a great one. Um, you know, the L-carnitine too for weight loss and boost of energy and fat mobilization. You want to be able to process fat faster in your body, and that is a great combination. B-complex, your MIC, uh, L-carnitine, three branched chain amino acids, rock and roll with Titan Complete. So that's definitely a good one to pair up with the ECA Stack Plus for energy, for fat burning, for overall natural health um, and benefit of your health, right? All right, so let's talk about some other things here. So, Father's Day, I kind of did it. Let's talk about the special. It's 1.30 for the full male panel right now. Full male panel, 1.30. It's usually 200. So now for men's health week, I'm going to call it, um, and it's health month. So we'll do some other specials for you guys. Take advantage of the blood test for 1.30. If you don't need a blood test, you're a current patient, you're all good, we'll take $25 off your total order. That means the total number at the bottom, you'll get $25 off of, okay? Not every therapy, nothing crazy. Bottom number, take 25 off, you're good to go if you're a current patient. If you're not a current patient and you want to become a current patient or you want to get blood work done, it's very simple, very easy. All you have to do is call or text 727-389-3220. We'll be happy to help you out. We can take all the information over the phone for you, get you all set up, and get you set up with a blood lab in your zip code. So it's very simple, very easy. All right? So that's that's the main special of this week, too, along with this month. Um, and at that point, what we're going to be doing this weekend. So Titan Medical Center will be the – we are presenting um, the Deep Warner Mid-Florida Classic. We're happy to be a part of that. It's going to be awesome. We'll be down in Orlando Saturday, all day. Friday, we'll be along with um, the seminar. The, there's a posing seminar, and we'll be doing a Titan seminar right afterwards. Um, I believe it's from 5 to 7 or 5 to 8. Um, stay tuned to social media for all that information. We'll get it out to you guys. But we'll be down there in full effect. So if you're in Orlando or traveling to Orlando, we will be down there. The Titans will be there. All right? I think me, Big Drew, Eva... We got some special people coming along, so I can't wait. All right, so I'm going to talk about some of this other thing. So I'm definitely getting uh, some questions here. Women's HRT, glucose control. All right, so Lori's asking about women's HRT and glucose control. I've been talking about you guys all day. So let's talk about some of the women. Let's get them involved. All right, so women's HRT. Women are a little bit more difficult than men, right? And I say this because balance your hormones can be a little more trickier. And when you look at women's hormones, there's actually more blood tests that we do on a female panel than a male panel. So we're looking more in depth at some of these different hormones. So for a guy, just, uh, just for example, we do an estradiol test, which is an E2 or an estradiol sensitive. So that test, what that would be as far as estrogen levels for a male to look at, you know, possible symptoms, water retention, irritability, gonochromatic, and stuff like that. For women, you're going to have total estrogens. Um, you're going to have the estradiol. You're going to have DHEA we're going to look at. We're going to look at free and total testosterone along with the guys, same thing. Um, but at that point, it might be balanced. Progesterone. So some females need a little bit of estrogen. Some females need testosterone. Some females need testosterone and some DHEA. So at that point, maybe it's a progesterone. It just all depends. So that's really where it covers the blood test for you females. And we look at all that and where your follicular stage is at or if you're in menopause, we'll be able to find that out too. Um, and be able to help you out and treat you. So if you're having symptoms like uh, night sweats, uh, hot flashes, mood swings, um, not being able to get rid of the, the belly fat or fat deposits in the body, that can be an estrogen problem too as well. Um, or, you know, just mental. You're not feeling good. You're depressed too. That's another symptom. And that's something that goes right along with hormones a lot of the different time. Um, and when you go in to see your doctor and you tell them, I'm feeling depressed, doc, they don't even think about checking your hormones. Think about it. If you guys are on antidepressant medications. When you went in to see your doctor or even talk about the problem that you were having, whatever it may have been, did they even offer to check your hormones through blood work? Did they bring this up to you? Because I guarantee at that point in time, you maybe not even thought about it. Like, you know what, I'm just depressed. I'm in a bad way. Some things are going wrong. I don't know what's wrong with me. I need to go talk to my doctor or medical provider. And then you go and then you say that. And then their first option is, you know, maybe you need some antidepressants, and they put you on antidepressants. And at that point, that might not work. It might turn you into a zombie. It just might make you tired. It, it might work. So at that point, you know, it just really depends what's really going on with you and if they're checking and making sure they're uncovering every stone before they really 
put you on a treatment plan and make sure that they're doing the right thing for you, right? All right, so does health insurance cover any of your services? All right, so James, it's a good question. We get it all the time. Unfortunately, we do not take insurance for any of our services. Um, the reason is, is we don't produce diagnosis codes for insurance companies. Um, it does not, it restricts our doctor kind of what he can do and kind of what he tests for. Think about it. A lot of doctors won't even test for some of these hormones or some of these vitamin panels. The reason is, is because insurance won't cover it most of the time. And usually um, if they do say, hey, listen, I'm going to take your insurance card and they don't want to cover it, they won't kick it back to the doctor. They're going to kick it back to you at a full rate. And it's going to be very, very expensive. So at that point, like the test we run for a male, and usually we'll charge 150 bucks, and this week it's 130, so take advantage of it. But for the 150, usually those tests, um, they cost like 12 to 1500 bucks. If it's coming out of pocket, you say your cash pay. Well, they send you that bill, there's really no knockdown price after that. Um, so at that point, really take advantage of it. It's out of pocket, but at that point, it's not going to a permanent record. There's no diagnosis codes going along with it. General practitioners usually have to look for a symptom or an issue to be able to want a blood test. That's what they provide the insurance company with the diagnosis code. At that point, they can bill it and then get paid for it. So that's a little insight on how that works. I cover it all the time. I definitely want to. Any office in Jersey. All right. So, Roberto, we can definitely serve you in New Jersey. So all you have to do is call or text 727-389-3220. We can definitely help you out and take care of you, okay? All right. So we covered some of the men's health, the event this Sunday, Deep Warner, Midford Classic. And at that, guest poser Jen McEnry, IABB Pro, will be there. She is a Titan Medical Center athlete, and she will be there doing the guest posing. So it's really, really cool. I can't wait. She's really awesome. She looks great. She's getting ready for a competition. So she should be in top of the line shape and show you guys how it should look. All right. Big Drew. Big Drew has come on official. Um, he is exclusive tight medical center athlete. My man. At 100. So he's on. He's with us. He's determined. And we are focused. So we're going to take Titan to a whole different level and a lot of different avenues. So he's uh, he's definitely going to be an asset to Titan Medical Center. We're very happy to have him on. So no more 5% for him. We love the guys with 5% and everything like that every year around. But he's officially become a Titan. So at that point, we are going to take some things to a whole different level. Talking about Mount Olympus status, right? All the way to the top. All right. So we got a question last time. What methods do you use to lose weight and burn fat? Right? That was the poll question, right? So what methods do you use? And the most commonly answered one was exercise, right? So exercise is definitely the first step. Now, what do we have to look at through exercise? The other one was diet. I don't know if there was another one. Medical weight loss. Me right. Medical weight loss essentially was, was the next one after that. So at that point, exercise. So we think about exercising. Now, some people get complacent. They do the exact same exercises every time, right? And over time, if you don't change anything, um, you might get different results. And the reason I say this is because over time when we age, our metabolism does slow down. So at that point, if you're not taking something or not boosting in some other way, shape, or form, it's probably going to slow down, and that amount of work that you were doing is not going to be enough. So you might have to increase that work. Also, diet changes. So when metabolism slows down, the diet is going to be affected. So if you're eating haagen I don't know who does that, um, every day, and <laughs> at that point, uh, your metabolism slows down, and you know at that point, you're going to start probably gaining some weight. Glucose levels could probably go up. We talk about sugar and glucose levels, too, so... I mean, look for that, but look for the weight to pack on at that point because you're not burning as many calories and you're not, your metabolism is not boosted like it should be or optimized like it was. When we're younger, we can do that. We can get away with these different things. That's when you say, when I was 20 years old, I could bench 315, I had a six pack, I could eat this all day, and now if I eat one little piece of cake, I'm just, you know, I'm bloated out and I gained 10 pounds. So at that point, there's reasons why. Um, and you know, it should definitely, it should, you know, raise a red flag to you anyway. Maybe you should change your diet a little bit more. Maybe you should exercise a little bit more. These may be, you know, called to, to it's called to action for you to be able to do it. But we also want to look at hormones. So hormones obviously are going to be directions. They're going to tell your body what to do and having hormones optimized are going to benefit you in a lot of different ways. They're going to take you back in time, maybe not on the outside all the way, like take away all the wrinkles and everything like that. But on the inside, it could help bring those levels back to where they used to be at, making your body function a lot better. Um, you know, it's, it's really awesome. You know, we've helped so many people in a lot of different ways. Um, and I'm not talking about gym or growing muscles or anything like that. 
I'm talking about everyday lifestyles. Uh, being a mom, having a job, right? Being able to be optimized all day, having the energy to take care of your kids or do your job. Like, you know, I mean, some of these, these, these ladies, I give it out to you guys. You guys are cooking, cleaning, job, kids. I mean, big to you, big ups. And guys, I'm not taking away from you because I know exactly what it is too. If you're running your own business or you've got a serious job, you're dedicated, you're focused, you're worried about everything else, your family comes first, you're worried about them, you know, you barely got time for yourselves, and this is where you really got to take care of yourself. And the reason I say this is because if you don't take care of yourself and you are putting everything on yourself, on your back, right, when you break down or something breaks down, it's going to be a, a house of cards. It's all going to fall. So at that point, you really want to make sure your health is number one. So investing in your health should be your best investment, that and your family or loved ones. Um, I, I think that's going to pay off extremely well for you in 99% of the cases, okay? So what methods do we use to lose fat and burn fat? So exercise one, we talked about exercise, so you might have to increase exercise, right? Volume or change up exercise. Your diet is going to be another one. Um, obviously, optimizing hormones or medical weight loss is going to be a great option for you. And there's a lot of different options depending on your health history and what, what works best for you or where you're at and your scenario, right? Because it shouldn't be a cookie cutter program. There's not just one shot and pill for everybody that walks in the door. We're not just, uh, you know, you're getting this, this regimen, you're getting this regimen, and everybody's getting that regimen. It's not like Oprah Winfrey, all right? Not everybody's getting one. <laughs> so make sure that you get a customized program of therapies or whatever's gonna benefit you and try to reach your goals for health or fitness level. I mean, people want to perform better too, and there's different ways to perform better without cheating per se, right? You don't have to cheat to perform better. And cheating in people's minds can differ uh, in a lot of different ways, and I see it a lot of time, you know, on the natural, you know, conversation. And it's, are you natural? Are you not natural? What constitutes natural? He's not natural. They don't look natural. That's not natural. Guys, there's a lot of things, and most of the things on this planet and Earth right now are unnatural in a lot of different ways. So it just depends on, on, on your uh, definition of that and how you feel about it. But those are all good ways. If you have any other good ways, please bring them up. I love it. DNA, oh, just curious. Terry Danielle, DNA, I don't know what that is. Like DNA testing. We do do, the, um, so we do food sensitivity testing. That's a good one. DNA testing we don't do. Um, we just, at that point, we're just not in the genetic portion. Uh, that's not what we focus on. We focus on what we do well. So the areas of hormone replacement therapy, medical weight loss, vitamin amino acid injectable therapies, rejuvenation detox, hair health and, and nail capsules, um, you know, a lot of different therapies for males, females, just to make you look good, feel good, perform better. That's what we do well. So that's what we want to focus on. We stay in our lane. I want to make sure we do too. Overview of your labs. We talked about labs earlier and the special for guys is going on. Um, so at that point, make sure you understand your labs. Make sure the medical doctor or medical provider is going over your labs and you understand what's going on with these labs. Make sure you get a copy of your labs. At that point, you have a copy. Make sure you ask for one. You can keep it in a personal file and you can always follow your history and track it, right? And always, if you have a health problem, you can take it to the next medical provider and you have a file and it documents everything that was going on up to that point. So that's a big one. Um, a lot of people, they're not going to the labs. They have no idea what their labs are. Um, this was a scary one. So a guy uh, brought up a question. He said, listen, I'm currently on TRT, and I possibly might want to move over. Uh, I want, might want to move on your program. My, my doctor right now wants me only to meet 500, I'm told, testosterone, and 246 to 916 is the range, right? So he wants that, and he's at a 300 now. So he wants him to get about 200 points to 500, and then at that point, he doesn't want him to stay on testipine. He wants him to change up and, and maybe go and go off and go back on and, and all different kinds of things. So it's not really worth it just to go to 500 if you're having to inject yourself with a needle, right? I mean, I've injected myself for over 10 years for HRT now. And at that point, it never gets old, okay? At that point, it, you know, it's not as bad, but you're still sucking yourself with a needle and I'm sorry, I'm not a, a needle junkie. I, I do inject myself with my vitamins, my needles. I take like 10 shots a day, but at that point, I really don't like them. I mean, but they do help me out in a lot of different ways. So when you do that, you want to get the most optimal result out of it. You, and I, you don't want to be overdosing on testosterone and stuff like that. I'm not saying that, but you definitely want to be able to get to 900, 1,000, the top of the range. If you're doing it, that's what replacement's for. And you want to make sure you're not getting any of these negative side effects. 
Also, you don't want to go on a ride. You don't want to go on a roller coaster ride up and down, up and down. Injecting those shots, going up, crashing, going up, crashing, going up, crashing. It's bad on the body. It's putting shock on the body. Your body's not knowing what's, what's going on. Lights turning on, lights turning off. Lights turning on, lights turning off. What should we do? So at that point, that, that state of confusion, it, it can be harmful or even stop some of your results if you're getting results, right? So at that point, make sure you're looking at those things. Make sure you're getting a good overview of your labs, an explanation of your labs, and we can help you out with that too. So at that point, you'll get a good explanation. You keep a copy of your labs in a file, record, and you always have them with you, all right? Um, put health first. So you always should put health first. And we talked about men's health, and at this point, I just want to bring it up. Bring down the ego. Take down the pride, right? If there's problems going on, you don't feel so good. You think something's going wrong internally. You haven't told anybody. Go get checked out. You don't even got to tell somebody you're going to get checked out. Go into urgent care by yourself, right? Walk down the street, leave, say you're going to go somewhere, go into urgent care, get checked out. Get a full physical. Get a full blood panel. Now, when you're looking at blood panels, if you're at a certain age, and I'm talking about, let's say, over 45, right? Now, you have to look at a couple different ones that are pretty serious right now. And talk about cancer-wise, too. Colon cancer um, and prostate cancer, right? So you want to make sure, because these are on the rise, right? Uh, and I think, um, I, you know, testicle cancer is very... Uh, it's there, but it's not as bad. So you definitely want to get checked. You know, you don't want to get checked by a physical and make sure that you're okay there. And when you're after 50, I'm sorry, guys, for the prostate. We usually run a PSA, which is a prostate blood test. But at that point, you're going to have to probably get the finger and just make sure that they're checking you properly. And I haven't been there yet. I'm not looking forward to it. So at that point, I know other guys don't look forward to it either. I talk to guys all the time that have to go through it. I'm like, do I have to do that? You know, John, should I do this? I'm like, listen, man. Your health, it's not something I, I would say I, I would like or anybody would probably like. Maybe somebody do. Maybe somebody <laughs> don't. I won't say that. Uh, but it's not something I, I would like, I guess. So I, I can understand where guys don't want to do it. But you should do it for your general health and making sure you're checked and making sure you're okay. Because, listen, like I said, if you have a problem and they find it faster, they can possibly help you a lot faster, right? You can get rid of it a lot quicker or it's not past a stage where it could be seriously or terminal. Um, at that point, I, I've had um, I've had some cousins that lost. You know, they've had their whole prostate taken out. Uh, you know, at that point, there's a lot of different things that go along with that. So it's not fun. It's not cool, right? And we okay. So Terry Danielle, all right. She's also going to ask about hormone pellets. So at Titan Medical Center, we do not do any hormone hormone pellets for hormone replacement. Let me tell you why. So hormone pellets are great in theory. Hormone pellets, you go in. They put a little insertion in you, they put the little pellets in, and you're good to go for three months, come back, we'll put them back in, you're going to be good, you're going to be feeling awesome, feeling great. The reason we don't do them is because of this, because everybody's body absorbs them a little bit different, so it can absorb faster, it can absorb slower, and at that point, what happens is to most of the patients that we see coming from a pellet therapy for hormone replacement is their levels are so spiked, it's crazy. And maybe after one month, it is, it's through the roof. So let me give you an example. For a female, usually total testosterone is like 0 to 44 through lab work, right? At that point, we see females put back at 300, 400. Now, that's like a guy. That's within a guy's normal range. So at that point, they're going to be experiencing possible side effects and getting more masculine trait side effects, like hair growth on the face, face deep into the voice, Clitoral enlargement, um, you know, it's just a lot of different things that go along with it. So you want to make sure you're at the optimal end, but you're not going crazy over in a masculine hormone for a female. So at that point, that's why I really don't do the pellets on that. Or it, it could cause a lot of uh, different other extremes. It just depends what they put in that hormone pellet because it could be estrogen, it could be testosterone, it could be progesterone. So at that point, once you're on that ride and once they insert it in you, there's no going back unless it pops out by itself. And I've had patients come back with that complaint. It's popped out. I've had to go back to the office. How unsanitary is that, right? And infection is not something you want, right? So that's the real reason we don't do more replacement with pellets. And I know a lot of doctors out there push the pellets. I know it's a lot easier for everybody in theory. You know, I just get this in. I don't have to do injections or I don't have to do no creams or a trochee or whatever it may be for my, my option. Um, you know, I, I think it's a good, you know, like I said, good in theory, but as far as patients and what they go through, I, I don't think they're receiving benefits. I've seen females get these permanent negative side effects and not be happy. 
That's why I say females are a little harder than guys, you know, because guys, we can take a little bit of extra hair growth because it's a masculine hormone. We can overdose under more of a masculine hormone than females. When you go a little higher for guys, I mean, it's not something serious like that. Um, but when we talk about this too as well, we talk about testosterone levels and free, level, free testosterone levels and DHT, dihydrotestosterone levels. So they all correlate together, especially free testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. And when those levels get too high and they go really, really extremely high, um, the dehydrotestosterone could be a negative effect for hair. And this is caused the thinness of balding. Um, and it basically what it does is, is if you have these genes or you're um, predisposed to this through family history, then it's possible on males and females that you'll get hair loss and possible thinning. And this will speed up the process. So at that point, you really want to make sure, especially girls, because guys, I think we're more enough to, you know what, I'll shave my head. It is what it is. You know, and guys can get away with it. We're more females like, listen, I want my hair. I don't want this to happen. I don't want to wear wigs. I know females that have to wear wigs. You know, you don't want to do that. That's on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's not fun. Or maybe you want to play dress up, and that is fun. <laughs> you know, I, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm open-minded to everybody. So at that point, um, I want you just to want, I want you to be more in tune and educated of what it is and how these different things can affect you. Because going too extreme in one place can cause negative side effects in other places, right? So I, I think I've covered a lot of information here. Oh, we got our 32 minutes. Any other questions, guys? You got some more questions? Not on the uh, Facebook. Did I say two? Maybe a better three. All right. So let's go over. Oh, wow. There's a whole bunch of people on here. Tara said, okay, thank you. All right. No, you're welcome, Tara. You're very, very welcome. Any, any questions I can answer? So last week we talked about AOD. AOD 9604. And I got a question on this, so I wanted to answer it before we went on. So AOD, John, what does AOD stand for in these cool letterings, right? And like BPC, body protection compound, right? AOD is advanced obesity drug. So that's what AOD stands for. It's advanced obesity, uh, advanced obesity drug, AOD. So now you know, and what that does is it is supposed to help, and it will help within regarding weight loss and lean mass. Um, as far as giving you the upside as positive as what growth hormone would do without negative side effects. Um, that's kind of the best way, Landon's, I can break it down for you guys. We have more information on it. We can fill you in on it. You can call our text, 727-389-3220, AOD 9604, injectable fat burner peptide. Uh, so we talked about that, all right? All right, and we talked about minor HRT, making sure a real doctor, making sure you're getting prescriptions from a U.S. licensed pharmacy. There should be no relabeling on your medications. It should be coming right from the U.S. licensed pharmacy. You should be able to verify with the pharmacy and not with the clinic. So let's say you get a bottle of testosterone from us, right? It can come from a number of different pharmacies that we use. But always, you always see the pharmacy's label on there. You'll be able to call the pharmacy and check that and verify that you're a patient. And you've got this medication dispensed to you, especially testosterone, which is a controlled substance. And the average Joe wouldn't think about this. They wouldn't know to even look at this. But I'm seeing things out there that I want to bring to people's attention because I think it's a serious thing that's going on. Um, so that, that's one more thing. So making sure your blood's getting checked. And I would say every three to six months, right? If you're having negative side effects, definitely sooner. As soon as you're having them, let your medical practitioner or medical provider know. Make sure they're blood testing you or doing something about it. If they're not, or they don't want a blood test for it, or say you're just crazy, make sure you're checking with a second opinion. Make sure you're getting these blood tests at least. The blood test should tell you most of the different things that are going on with you, especially with the symptoms of negative side effects. And usually, if the doctor or HRT clinic or whoever is providing medical service to you is in tuned and experienced in what they're doing, then when you bring up some of these symptoms, they've probably already been there before and they could probably point in the right direction and the medical provider will probably be able to request the right blood test for you to get you the answers that we're looking for. And if you need medical treatment afterwards, let's say prolactin's high or estrogen's too high or too low, you can tweak medications or get the proper medications to get those levels down or where they need to be at. So it's all about going with who's the best, who's going to be best for you, who's giving you the best patient service, top-notch therapies, and all the rest that comes with it. All right, so one more last question that gets brought up to me. What is a good testosterone number? And I brought this kind of with the 500 question. But, you know, depending on what the lab ranges are, and different labs have different ranges. Let's go with LabCorp, though. So 216, 
to 946 on a total. What's a good number? Now, this is kind of hard because a good number could be 800. It could be 1,000. It could be 900. The free testosterone, that's another factor. If that's within range, right? Or that's in a good high number. If you're feeling good, that's what should matter. The number is only one correlation. The other correlation is how you feel and symptom relief. So how you feel, are the symptoms gone, right? And is that number good? And all three of those things combined is what should really matter to you. So if all those things are correlating together, you're getting a great effect, you're feeling good, you got a good number, everything's right, you're dialed in. Continue on, enjoy yourself. If it's not, number's too low, symptoms aren't uh, gone, um, you're not feeling right, something's going wrong, get in touch with a practitioner or medical provider or clinic. They should be able to adjust, tweak, blood test, find out what's going on with you and take care of you properly. So I guess we'll leave it on that note. All right, guys, make sure men's health, put down the pride, put down the ego, go see a general practitioner. I talked to some guy, but I ain't been to a doctor in 10 years. Man, that is not something to brag about. All right, now I understand. You know, great, you don't get sick, that's awesome. You got a great immune system. But if you're getting to these certain ages, definitely check some things out. And how do you know what's going on on the inside if you don't? at least blood test, right? Even if you don't go to the doctor, you can get your labs drawn, at least have a copy for yourself. If you want to play Dr. Google, at least you have some results to go off of, okay? All right, so Instagram, Facebook, keep it locked, right? Got a lot of information coming to you guys. All new content, all day, every day. YouTube, same thing. And our longer videos on there, there's educational videos on there, explanation videos, some different things we can't put on Facebook or Instagram because it may be too long, right? At that point, you can check those out. The show this weekend, we'll see you in Orlando. Next month, we'll see you in Miami, PCA. I can't wait for that. We got Iron Bay Classic. We've got a lot of different events. Keep it locked on the newsletter, too. The newsletter will be out. If you don't and you're not on the newsletter, text 22828 Titan Medical. All right? All right, guys. I'm John from Titan. I appreciate you guys sticking with me, tuning in. If you guys have any questions, DM me. I'll cover them next Titan Talk Tuesday. I'll see you next week, guys.